One foot, not even a foot, a few inches changed everything on this play. Let me show you real quick. Go ahead and pause it. Change the angle. Play it. Watch it, watch it. Pause it, zoom in on that. Enhance it, enhance it. One foot. The worst punt of the night, a haphazard comet that's gonna come crashing down from the clouds only to hit an undeserving lower leg bone. A twist of fate that undoubtedly altered the trajectory of this game. But was this luck? And better yet, how big of a role does luck play in the NFL, in sports? So football is far from random. If it was random, you and I could be out there right now. Uh, we can't. Still, that doesn't mean that luck can't play some type of role in this dance. To understand luck, we need to first define it, because if we can define it, then we can begin measuring it. Luck is a chance event. It's a random occurrence where one doesn't maybe have any control over the outcome. It also gets misunderstood, misused, and confused with good and bad fortune, something someone would at least have some partial control over the outcome with. And luck is also simultaneously this medication for losing fans. Most don't deny its existence. Instead, the debate and really the doubt starts a little bit deeper with luck. So there is a general sentiment that while luck may exist, it is evenly distributed. I think one hypothetical example perfectly sums this up. Imagine a head coach explaining a loss due to luck. Should he choose such a path, he may no longer be a head coach at the conclusion of the press conference. Suggesting that luck plays a role in the outcome of a game immediately violates any sense of responsibility. It's shifting the blame from thyself to thy universe. The question is, is this accurate? Does luck balance out in football? To understand virtually anything, we kind of need something we can compare it to. For example, football is big. In other ways, football is small. How? Well, football games on average are longer in game length than basketball, baseball, hockey, and that more literal version of football. But American football is also smaller in the number of possessions and smaller in terms of games played in a season. This is crucial when it comes to luck. Even for those that kind of get this, they maybe don't fully appreciate the scale, so here's an example. In a typical NBA game, there are about 210 total possessions. In football, each team typically has the ball 11 to 12 times a game. We'll round that to 25 total possessions. Just for a moment, imagine the Celtics playing the Pistons in a game with only 25 possessions, where two teams play one six-minute game. A lesser team will have a much better chance at upsetting a better team with fewer possessions because while the sample size is so small, luck only needs to intervene in a handful of possessions to change the outcome. Roughly speaking, the less volume that we have, the more variance we can see in a data set, the more that luck can play a role. And since football games have so few possessions compared to other major sports, luck plays a big role in this way. Of course, this isn't the only variable as we compare sports on the luck continuum, but it is an important one. Additionally, of the four major American sports, football is the only one that doesn't involve a series in the postseason. It's one and done. So again, advantage luck relative to other sports. So how do we measure luck within the game of football? I spoke with Tom Bliss, who's a data scientist for the NFL, and he mentioned they had identified four different actions that were essentially chance or luck events. The first, dropped opponent interceptions. If your opponent just drops an interception, you are lucky. You should be thankful because, well, interceptions are important. If they just short circuit and get bricks for hands, that is a crucial play. And similarly, when your opponent drops a pass, you are lucky. And you're especially lucky if they got some green grass in front of them when they do it, because, well, they might have ran for a few more yards. 
thanks to Next Gen Stats, we can see how many yards they probably would have run for, and we've waited for this. If your opponent just whiffs a kick, not even close. you are lucky. Oh my goodness. We're not counting blocked kicks here. So again, this is a rather lucky event. And on the other hand, if your opponent makes a kick, you are slightly unlucky. Buck swings both ways. Perhaps most importantly, fumble recoveries. Now, some teams are good at generating fumbles. That's a form of good fortune. You have some control over that. But the moment that ball comes out, it is a chance event. It could bounce many different ways. Of course, not all fumbles are created equal. We had to account for this. For example, Tom Brady getting sacked and then fumbling about a 50-50 chance the defense is going to come up with the ball here. That is completely different than if the ball gets thrown down the field, the receiver takes off, gets hit in the secondary and fumbles. About a 70 5% chance the defense gets the ball typically here. So we waited for the different types of fumbles. Now, of course, there are going to be nuances to this, anecdotal counterpoints both ways. But in the NFL, these plays are almost entirely chance events. Still, some of you might be itching to recite your fourth grade head coach. Luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Wow. Yeah. 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 This is you. Hear me out on this. We looked in the correlation between season, games, and even from one play to the next, and we found virtually no correlation. So if you got lucky on these plays throughout one game, three games, or the season, or just even a few plays, there was nothing to say it would continue. That makes these four plays chance events. Using the NFL's four categories, we can examine the effects on win probability. A win probability added model quantifies the effects from one event or action to the next as it relates to win probability. You may have noticed this just tracking a game on your phone. For example, if a team fumbles in the fourth quarter, the percent change as far as the likelihood they will win the game will drop significantly. It might not drop as much if they fumble in the first quarter though. We're starting at 2017 because this is when the NFL could start doing player tracking with next gen sports. And all the way at the bottom, we have the 2021 Tennessee Titans. The Titans actually benefited from the Bengals dropping passes in this game. However, they did not benefit from the fact that the Bengals nailed all four field goals, two of which were 50 plus yards. Remember, luck can swing both ways. Now, if Evan McPherson had missed any of these four field goals, we would have said, well, that was lucky for the Titans but he made all four, so it was unlucky for the Titans because he's an average NFL kicker. On average, he should have missed at least one of these field goals. And before we start saying these field goals are the result of the Bengals driving into the Titans' territory, something the Titans did have control over, remember we are isolating specifically for when that ball hits the foot, that kicking event, and outside of blocking the kick, the Titans have no control over which way that ball will fly, if it will go in or not. It is a chance event. Think of it this way. The more you leave up to luck, the more luck will decide your fate. That's not an ideal strategy. So did luck balance out for the Titans here? Obviously not. They didn't even get a chance for it to balance out because they played one game and, well, McPherson made all four, given our metric, that was quite unlucky for the Titans. Since this was a low scoring game, each one of these field goals carried significant relative weight for the game, including that one to win the game as time concluded. This is partly why win probability added model isn't perfect and why the Titans were such an outlier. Football is not random. The Titans had plenty of chances, so to speak. They obviously didn't lose on luck alone, but the small sample size is the reason why we see the greatest parity across the four major American sports in football. So what about the teams that got the luckiest in the postseason? Maybe there's more we can learn here if we look at the top of this chart. So if we scroll up, we find... Wait a second. Enhance it. Is that that freaking foot again? Enhance it. What contributed? Well, amongst other things, that tibia did help. In fact, the Chiefs recovered four of the five fumbles they forced, 80%, including this one. Offensively, they also recovered four of the six fumbles they had, meaning eight of the 11 fumbles bounced their way. 
The Chiefs also benefited from Jake Moody's missed point after. Some people confuse this as a blocked kick, but if you watch the replay, he toe punches it almost directly into the line. That's not a normal angle for a point after. Bear in mind, Moody had set the record for point afters just a few weeks prior, so this was lucky for the Chiefs. Maybe you're still in disbelief though. Maybe that youth football head coach's speech is still rattling around in your head and the idea of luck influencing something as sacred as the game of football, that's just sacrilegious. Uh, if this is you, then consider a few other points here. If you had a positive luck score in a postseason game, you won 69% of the time. In fact, since we have been able to track this metric, three Super Bowl champs have been in the top seven out of the 80 playoff teams. I will keep stating this though, luck is not everything. The 2018 Patriots were one of the most unlucky teams and they won the Super Bowl. There are anecdotes like this, but consider something else I discovered. If we look at the top 10 single playoff luck scores, nine of them won their game. Assuming that luck evens out over the course of the playoffs would be incorrect. There just isn't enough time. And while there's no correlation from one play to the next amongst these four actions the NFL identified, there's a decent correlation between a positive luck score and winning. What if we looked at a larger sample size? Does luck even out across the regular season? With more games, we can see that luck has evened out considerably, the greatest outlier being the 2023 Vikings, who experienced about a minus 10% luck per game. Still, this was over 170% cumulative luck for the season. Looking back, I noticed that many Vikings fans were very quick to point out this bad luck, but downright dismissive and not as boisterous about the incredible luck that they enjoyed just a season prior. It is a touchdown on their last I don't think that that is coincidental. So since 2018, there have been 94 teams that have a negative cumulative luck score. And how many of these teams might have cracked the postseason if luck was more in their favor, if they had won maybe one or two more regular season games? How much different would history be? It's worth noting that there is an error in this data set. All the way at the top, we have the 2019 Seahawks, and the Seahawks have never been lucky. They just work harder than everybody else, and anybody who disagrees with this, shut up. Throwing out this glitch, we see the Chiefs on top again. The Chiefs and Seahawks had roughly 200% of cumulative WPA, which gives the impression that they maybe won two games off of luck over the course of a season, but in reality, these games are very close. They might have only needed 10 to 20% of WPA to win a game, so they could have won multiple games over the course of a season due to luck. Isolating for that Seahawks team, I remember that magical ride they had as a fan, and I even spoke with Ben Baldwin about it, who was a writer for The Athletic at the time and covered the Seahawks. He had the following to say. Just 12 games into the season, the Seahawks were 8-1 in, in games decided by a touchdown or less. In five of those wins, here are some notable luck plays. Cincinnati misses a 45-yard field goal in the third quarter. Seahawks win by one. Roethlisberger gets injured halfway through the game. Seahawks win by two. Sirline misses a potential game-winning 44-yard field goal. Seahawks win in overtime. Seahawks win the coin flip in overtime and go on to score a touchdown on the opening drive. McLaughlin misses a potential game-winning 47-yard field goal in overtime. Nothing the Seahawks did caused field goals to sail wide right or left or coin flips to come up in their favor, but they benefited significantly from these events and went on to win these games. They had the smallest point differential of a 10-2 team ever, and their games were historically back and forth. Again, luck was very much on their side. So uh, this might not be a glitch. It appears as though even over a regular season, luck can significantly change the trajectory of a team. Obviously this model isn't perfect. There are other forms of luck, such as blown penalties, injuries, or literal coin flips. Measuring for these actions and waiting for them right now is a little challenging, but I find it difficult to deny the four actions Tom and the NFL has presented as luck events, thus, I find it difficult to deny luck in the game of football. So 
how should teams handle this? How should people handle this? As I was making this video, I struggled to find many coaches talking about luck, but it wasn't difficult to find something else. Luck is when preparation, preparation meets, meets opportunity. opportunity. This phrase has been beaten into the skull of anyone who's played youth sports, but in a way, it is admitting to luck. You obviously can't control everything, and that's good advice. Everybody would agree with that. Unfortunately, there are still many that deny the existence of luck, and I think that that only increases the likelihood of being fooled by luck, being fooled by randomness. For example, how many players and coaches have received massive contracts largely due to luck? After quarterbacking the Giants to a playoff win, Daniel Jones went on to receive one of the biggest contracts in history. That playoff win came against a team that had been quite lucky, a team we previously spoke about, the Vikings. The next season didn't work out very well for the Giants. Would Daniel Jones have received that contract at the conclusion of this season? Likely not. How many GMs hit the lottery on a single draft pick and look like Nostradamus? How many GMs get fired because they have a long-term strategy that the owner maybe just didn't have patience for? I did a video on this, by the way. The NFL draft is wildly inefficient, and I recommend you check it out. Right experts, players, and coaches don't deny the existence of luck. They identify it and embrace it. They don't overconfidently create a narrative off of a single game. They create a measurable strategy for the series of games. Because if you can measure something, then you can look to manage it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't, and take care.